Hey everyone, welcome back to Lab Coats. So, big surprise, I've come crawling back to sulfur chemistry once again. But this time, my goal isn't to make one of the worst smelling chemicals imaginable. Instead, I'll be making two unique compounds that have somewhat more practical applications. Phosphorus pentasulfide, and from that, Lawson's reagent. As thiating agents, these reagents like to swap the oxygen atoms on other molecules with sulfur, allowing you to convert things like ketones and alcohols to more exciting thioketones and mercaptans with relative ease. And take it from somebody who's made these chemicals the traditional way. This is a fairly appealing alternative to hydrogen sulfide. I definitely hope to show these compounds in action sometime in the future, but for now, let me show you how they're made. To get started, I obtained the following reagents. Sulfur, red phosphorus, anisole, diethyl ether, and xylene. Our first task in this endeavor is to synthesize phosphorus pentasulfide, and for that, we'll only need the first two ingredients. So, to a 50 milliliter round bottom flask, I added 8.88 grams of powdered sulfur. This was gardening grade sulfur, and it seemed to work well enough in this procedure. Then, 3.43 grams of red phosphorus was measured out and combined with the sulfur. Once the powders were mixed together thoroughly, heat was carefully applied using a propane torch. It took a while for the flask to get up to temperature, but once it did... Since I didn't have many references for this reaction, I was a little worried that the mixture would ignite violently, similar to flash powder. Thankfully though, that didn't happen, and I avoided being blasted full of glass shrapnel. However, some of the phosphorus did seem to flash boil as the reaction took off, causing a brief fireball inside the flask as all the oxygen was consumed, and ejecting the glass stopper in the process. So, I quickly resealed the flask to prevent the product from oxidizing, and then continued heating. As the reaction progressed, a red liquid could be seen refluxing in the flask. Given how strongly I was heating things, this was almost certainly a mixture of sulfur and phosphorus pentasulfide, probably heavier on the pentasulfide since most of the phosphorus seemed to have reacted. I kept refluxing the mixture for a few more minutes, and then allowed everything to cool back to room temperature. Then, I used a mill spatula to break up the solid mass, which I crushed up into a powder and weighed. In total, I obtained 10.45 grams of phosphorus pentasulfide. I tried burning some off camera to ensure it wasn't just sulfur, and the bright green flame and white smoke definitely told me there was phosphorus present. So, now that I had the pentasulfide, the next step was to add to the anisole and convert it to Lawson's reagent. To do this, I decided to follow the original procedure provided by Dr. Lawson himself, which told me that I needed 25.5 mils of anisole for the amount of pentasulfide I had. So, to my 50 milliliter round bottom flask, I added the 10.45 grams of phosphorus pentasulfide followed by the required amount of anisole. Then, a reflux condenser was connected, stirring was commenced, and I moved everything outside for ventilation. You see, even though Lawson's reagent is a convenient alternative to hydrogen sulfide in some reactions, the sulfur gods still demand a hydrogen sulfide sacrifice, which the anisole must provide before entering the cult of organosulfur chemistry. You can see the reaction pathway here. I didn't film it while I was outside, but essentially, the pentasulfide slowly dissolved into the anisole as the mixture was heated and refluxed, and the smell of hydrogen sulfide could be detected as it slowly bubbled out of solution. After refluxing for just over two hours, the reaction was taken off heat, and, as you can see, a lot of solid material crashed out as the solution was allowed to cool. This is our crude Lawson's reagent, which I filtered off and washed with two 10 milliliter portions of diethyl ether. Now, at this point, the paper simply calls it good enough and doesn't bother purifying the product further. But, as you know, I like myself a good challenge, and according to YouTube's resident sulfur chemist, recrystallizing this stuff is pretty much impossible. We'll see about that. To perform this recrystallization, I ended up using around 175 milliliters of xylene, which I stirred and heated with the crude Lawson's reagent until the mixture reached a gentle boil. It's important not to keep our product on heat for very long, since Lawson's reagent slowly decomposes and polymerizes above 100 degrees Celsius. So, as soon as everything was dissolved, I transferred the solution to a secondary beaker and waited. After roughly 10 minutes, a few glittery crystals could be seen floating around, and after 15 minutes, larger flakes became visible. I let things cool for probably another 10 minutes, and when I checked back, I was amazed by how big and beautiful the crystals were getting. So, to my good friend Joey, and any other sulfur chemists who have never seen Lawson's reagent properly crystallized, this one's for you. I chilled the solution on ice for a little while, and then filtered it to retrieve the freshly crystallized product. In the end, I lost a fair bit of the Lawson's reagent due to the recrystallization, but the 3-4 grams of crystals that I collected seemed totally worth it. And now, for the big question most of my returning viewers are probably asking. What did it smell like? Well, the phosphorus pentasulfide before treatment simply smell like rotting eggs, since it hydrolyzes in the presence of atmospheric moisture to form hydrogen sulfide. But the Lawson's reagent itself smelled totally different, 
being more similar to scatol or weird artificial poop than sulfur. Not exactly what I was expecting, but hey, you learn something new every day. Alright, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you've all enjoyed this little dive into the world of thiating agents and organosulfur chemistry. If you did, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I've got a whole bunch of new projects planned out that you do not want to miss, including making the world's strongest acid in my garage, turning chocolate into a super stimulant, legally cooking a type of methamphetamine, and smelling ultra-stinky tellurium compounds to close out my adventures in stench sampling. Trust me, 2024 is going to be one wild year if I have anything to say about it. As always, a big thanks goes out to all my supporters on Patreon. Videos like this wouldn't be possible without the support of viewers like you, so if you like what I do, consider donating using the links below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Lab Coats, out.